Hey, welcome back for another episode of Transform Your Workplace. I've got my returning guest, Nicole Blevins, one of my favorite guests. Nicole, how are oh, you? Oh, thanks. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's like that time of season where, you know, we and the work that you do, you're working with clients on like open enrollment season, and that's the time for them to change what they're doing from a benefit standpoint. But I think as we probably survey our employees throughout the year, and I know as any of them right now, we're internally doing the, our what people want from work survey yeah. and we're doing it for clients and others that want to participate in that. But that's, it's a nice opportunity to ask people like, Hey, what else do you need from a benefits and compensation standpoint? And that's usually where other ideas will come into play. So you uh, did a good job of digging up this article that is from human resources executive. And in the article is five key voluntary benefits to watch for in 2025. And like I, I said, as you're collecting data and, and you're looking at what your offering package is going into the next year. I think there's some really good ideas in this article and, and I'm sure we'll have some others too. So yeah, let's get into it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, I was going to say there was a really interesting statistic too in the article that said there was a Gallagher study that found that 67% of employers are seeking ways to offer more voluntary be benefit choices to their employees because 63% of employees have indicated they would consider changing jobs for better benefit offerings. So I thought that was interesting. That was higher than I was expecting those numbers to be. And I just thought it would be a really great topic, especially going into open enrollment to really be thinking about how we can offer more value to our employees and make sure that we're meeting their needs so that we can retain them. And voluntary benefits just means the the organization's offering it, but the employee it really it's the opt in at their level. So the employer is yes. not really they don't necessarily have to contribute to it, but sometimes maybe they uh, supplement it or subsidize it. In your experience, is that yes. pretty accurate? Yeah, usually when we're talking about voluntary benefits, people think of things like AFLAC, right? Yeah. It's where you have those voluntary offerings and the employee opts into it and is paying those premiums. And there's not necessarily a portion that the employer is paying. With that said, you certainly can pay a portion, mm -hmm. right? And be super generous and have additional offerings there. But it's more of just giving employees that access or that option to do. So. And what's great about it is you can provide a lot of different options and it not really be super costly for the employer to do that. So it's a really great option to look at going into open enrollment. You mentioned Aflac. There's other vendors out there like this too, but yeah. in this article, they're highlighting supplemental health benefits as being one of the voluntary benefits that employers are looking to add and employees want. So what sort of things come up under this and what's the why behind it? Yeah, supplemental health benefits is like critical illness, accident coverage, hospital indemnity plans is what falls under to that supplemental health benefit bucket. And AFLAC, I mentioned already, is the most common one because of the commercial, right? <laughs> That's what springs <laughs> in everyone's head. Yeah, AFLAC. <laughs> and I think the reason why this is coming up as a trend to watch is obviously COVID impacted the world a lot. And I think people experienced family members or friends or even themselves getting really seriously ill or um, having things happen that they didn't prepare for or didn't think could happen to them, right? So that's really changed people's perspectives on, I do need to be prepared in case a really critical illness comes up in my family or I have an accident or I'm hospitalized for a long period of time so that I have some type of safety net or benefit to fall back on that will protect myself and my family. So I think that's why that's gone on the rise. Um, recently since COVID has impacted so many people. Yeah. When I think of supplemental health benefits too, and I know many people have medical and dental plans, but supplemental can really help with the gaps. I think because a lot of people are paying yeah. a lot out of pocket for certain things, uh, whether it's accidents, illness, uh, chronic illnesses, mental health is one of those things. Uh -huh. Having a baby, there's just all these things where this could help provide some much needed help in those gaps that traditional medical insurance might have. Exactly. Yeah. Insurance is certainly there for those types of things as well, but you've got to meet your deductible and right. Depending on the plan you have, the deductible could be high or there's a portion that you still have to pay, even though the insurance is covering a portion. So it allows support for those situations as well. Next on their list was legal plans and services, and this seems like it's on the rise. In your experience, are you seeing that? 
Yeah, I've definitely um, seen employees reach out directly to HR and ask, do I have any type of legal benefits through the company, will preparation, or I've got this situation going through that I need to get some legal consulting or advice on. So I've definitely seen um, an influx of people asking about that. Legal Shield, there's all kinds of different vendors that offer that type of thing, but it is another offering where the employee can opt into it and pay a portion of those premiums to have access to that service to where if they've got a legal question they need support on, they can reach out directly to someone and get some initial guidance or consultation there. Or if they need a basic will preparation, this is another thing I relate back to COVID, right? That changed people's thought process on things. They may have lost family in that process as well. And it's made them think I need to be prepared for that. I need to have a will or something that really speaks to what my needs are and what I want for myself and my family if something really unfortunate like that were to happen. So that those are all kind of things that people will use for, or maybe they want to change their name and they need some guidance on how to do that. There's all kinds of different things they could use those services for. Retaining an attorney or a law firm is very expensive. So I yeah, imagine the yeah. way these legal plans will work is at the group level, employees are opting in, paying a monthly fee, and then it's it's there if you need it. It's a really it's a nice safety net. But yeah. I think they're banking on like an EAP where you, you, only a fraction of employees are actually going to take right. advantage of it. And that's probably where they make their money. But nice safety net for sure. Yeah. It's that peace of mind factor, right? And that's also why so many clients come to us at Zenium, right? It's having that peace of mind that someone's going to be there to answer your question if you need it or give you the support that you need if and when something happens. And if not, you still have that peace of mind there. So the next one on their list gives me a ton of anxiety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Identity theft and cybersecurity protection. I had read a few days ago that social security numbers across the United States was sold on the dark web or yeah. breached. I don't, I haven't read too much in detail, but I, that makes me worried that like now identity theft can become a major problem. These services have existed for a while, but maybe this is going to be on the rise. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I, I would say just the other day I had an employee reach out that actually heard about that social security number breach that you mentioned and was saying they were concerned about it and asking if they had any benefits specific to identity theft or cybersecurity protections that would offer them. And at the time that they asked that the other day, no, the the client or employer didn't offer anything like that, but it's definitely something that I brought to their attention and they're now thinking about and exploring adding going into this next kind of open enrollment cycle because that was such a big kind of news that was spread. And I think we all know that cybersecurity breaches are on the rise. We rely on technology even more so than we did before. Again, I feel like I'm bringing up COVID a lot. Like we think it's gone, but it's had such a lasting <laughs> impact on the workplace and employees' mm -hmm. perspectives and so many things. And people are using a lot more technology and that creates opportunities for people to try to get, gain access to that information and can lead to identity theft. And I think it's on people's minds. They are concerned about it and are starting to ask, what benefits do I have if something like this were to happen? Yeah. So I think it's a great thing to consider. I think so too. We get a ton of email, right? And there's all these really yeah. very clever phishing emails that come through that yep. look like it's from a, a vendor that you use. And it's, uh, if you really carefully look at the domain and the links behind buttons and things like that, you realize that it's just somebody trying to steal your information. So yeah. it's on the rise. I, I think this is going to be a benefit that a, a lot of employers will start adopting. So keep, keep an eye out on this one. For sure. The next one on their list is permanent life and long-term care. I feel like this is a benefit that many employers have already offered. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of employers are providing life insurance, usually a basic life premium, right, that covers up to in a certain amount or is based on the employee's salary. Long-term care plans, not so much in terms mm. of that I've seen. And I want to say it was last year or so, wa the Washington state implemented a long-term care requirement through the state that employees had to pay into directly through the state. And so it is more top of mind in terms of a need 
that people have and states are looking into options as well of mandating something like that even. So it's certainly worth like thinking about can we expand our life insurance, basic life insurance option that we're offering to include long-term care situations where that might be impacting someone. Long-term care has got to be expensive just yeah. because of the care. Like if you, I know there's long-term disability and that's different than this, but yes. the care is expensive as it is. Yeah. So I imagine the premiums for this is not cheap. Yeah. And as people age and needing that, that long-term care as well, people are living longer as well than we did mm -hmm. in the past and all that can add up. And it's really catastrophic. Actually, we are doing a Zen Connect meeting today at Zenium and the topic is about aging workforce and aging parents and how to like care for a parent or someone that needs long-term care. And we'll get into that a lot this afternoon. I'm really excited for that discussion, but it's top of mind for people. There's the sandwich generation where they're caring for parents and kids at the same time, or you're having to care for maybe a spouse that, that is needing that. And it can be really expensive and really like disruptive to our lives, but is important to ensure that our loved ones receive the care that they need as well. We'll bring up COVID one more time because I know a lot of uh, people <laughs> listening and, and you can relate to this. So many people bought dogs and other pets during the <laughs> pandemic. We needed companions yes. as we're like at home or whatever. I know I got a new dog during that time. So pet insurance yeah. is on the rise. No yes. doubt about it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of options out there. Employers are starting to adopt this. It's an easy benefit to add. What do you see as the benefits of this? Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen quite a few clients actually add that already this last open enrollment cycle. So it's definitely a trend and is definitely on the rise. I've had employees reach out and ask about it. Do we offer pet insurance? Is that something we can consider on the what people want from work survey? I expect to see that pop up a few times on mm -hmm. the survey results as well. And pets are like family to a lot of people. I would argue they are family. They are like mm -hmm. my kids and people really wanting to make sure that their pets receive good care and something does happen. I don't know if you've ever experienced having yep. to have your pet get a surgery or something like that. It's incredibly expensive, especially if it's unexpected and not something that you can really plan for. And so having the pet insurance really allows the employee to care for their pet without breaking the bank or stressing them out because that affects their work and how they show up to work. And we want to make sure that we're limiting those types of disruptive events as much as possible for employees. And so having this as an option is a great way to do that. But you're going to hear it here first, because I think by the time I release this episode, it'll be public information, but Zenium's adding a pet insurance option. Nice. So we uh, are working with a, a great partner that integrates with our payroll platform and our online benefit enrollment that all of our clients will be able to access and their employees through their web portal will be able to just opt in at any given time. There won't be an open enrollment period. It's just open all the time. Oh, so if so they get cool. a new pet, they're able to just opt in and they yeah. pay the monthly fee. And I, I think all that's worked out through the technology, but pretty exciting benefits that we can add, at, provide to all of our clients, clients within who's on our payroll so oh that's pretty, pretty so. awesome yeah i know clients love it when we add new things like that too they're like wow i didn't even know that was available i love this you're making it easy for me so that's great what other voluntary benefits are coming up that you've run across that employees either love or employers are adding them yeah what i've seen people ask for a lot of is like student loan type of payback programs to where you can set aside money to be able to pay back those student loans. I don't know what the technical or proper term is, is and I think it's something that employers are going to look into a little bit more this year as I just have started hearing more and more about it. But employees are asking like, hey, what benefits might I have access to to pay down my student loans or to make sure that I'm staying on top of that or reducing the impact that paying those student loans has on me. I think we all know that millennials are a growing generation that's entering the workforce and now dominating the workforce. And that generation also has a lot of student loan debt. And so that is something that they're very mindful of and conscious of and are concerned about being able to pay that as well as other 
bills. So that I think is something that people are going to look into opportunities. I don't have a great vendor example to share on that just yet, but I do think that's something that people will be looking into more as a trend for 2025 going into this next year. What else is coming up, if anything? That's the main one that I've heard a lot about. Let me think a little bit here. I think they did a good job of kind of covering the main ones. ones. I would add employee assistance program, not that it's, I would say, a trend. I feel like there's a lot of employers that do offer that, but there's still a lot that don't. So it's more of just a plug of having an employee assistance program. Mental health is a conversation that we're having more and is more of a concern for employees and it impacts the workforce, right? If employees are dealing with stressors or emotional or mental health challenges. And so offering an employee assistance program is actually really affordable. It's actually a really inexpensive type of program. And uh, employees can use it to when they are dealing with any of these stressors that we talked about, an aging parent that needs long-term care or a legal issue or any of those things, that affects people's mental health, right? Mm -hmm. And is a lot for them. And so having an employee assistance program benefit These other benefits we talked about will help them address that problem, right? But there's still the mental health impacts of having to go through something like that or dealing with that challenge. And so the employee assistance program really provides them that counseling or that support that they need in order to navigate that and move past it uh, mentally and emotionally. And so I just encourage anyone that doesn't have an employee assistance program already to really explore that for um, 2025 when it comes to open enrollment to see how that could really help and impact your employees and your workforce. I highly recommend an employee assistance program. I think for the cost you get the biggest bang for your buck for this benefit because inevitably somebody's going to be dealing with mental health problems. They're going to be buying a home. They're going to need to create a will. They're, they're just going to need access to professionals. And often people don't know where to start with some of this stuff. And EAPs yes. have a vast network of professionals in each of these spaces, especially in the mental yeah. health. There's a, we live in Oregon. There's a shortage of mental health professionals. And I think with the EAP, yeah. their resources run national. So they, it, it can be in person, it can be virtual, and, and they've got a vast network. So our partners, Canopy Wellness, they're out of Portland. They're amazing. And they've got yes, a great network great. and super helpful. Yes, so. they are. And super responsive. I've used them a few times for different things and they are really great. They are responsive. They get back to you right away. They even do resource retrievals. If you are looking for childcare and you need them to compile a list of like childcare providers nearby, that's extremely stressful, right? For someone to have to figure out what that's going to look like. And so they have resource retrieval resources where they will look up all that information for you and provide you a list with the pricing and the location and the availability and all of that stuff so you can have that information at your fingertips and make a good decision. That's a really great. Awesome discussion, Nicole. The article is from HR Executive. The title of the article, and I'll link to it in the show notes, is Five Key Voluntary Benefits to Watch in 2025. A lot of good stuff in this article. We talked about a lot of the reasons behind it. And I think, yeah, I think these are all important things. And I know for an employer, it can get overwhelming like to want to yeah. add all these things at once. So I, I encourage find external resources, talk to your employees, what's the most important, and baby step approach to this is you're not going to be able to do all these things at once. It's a, in your experience, like rolling out things like this is it, you need to be cautious about it or careful and thoughtful about how you roll it out. Don't you? Yeah, you do. You want to not overwhelm people, right. And just communicate kind of those changes to people. And also I would say we talked a lot about a lot of different options and trends here, but not all of those are going to be great for your workforce, right? Employees want different things and different organizations have different employees with different needs. I just, again, a a plug for that, what people want from work survey. If you've participated in that, you'll get some really good feedback in that survey to make some of those decisions and see, oh, are people asking for pet insurance or are they asking for the legal services and then what to prioritize for 2025 as well. Good stuff, Nicole. I appreciate you coming on. Of course. Talk soon.
Hey, thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode of Transform Your Workplace. The content on this show is strictly for general information and educational purposes only so that you can go transform your workplace in a positive way. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on the show are the guest's own and don't represent the views, thoughts, and opinions of either Zenium HR, the sponsor of the show, or me, the host, Brandon Laws. Additionally, Zenium HR or myself, Brandon Laws, doesn't endorse any guest, their business, or any organization they represent. So discretion is advised. We encourage you to work with a trusted advisor to find a custom approach that fits your organization's needs. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode.